All right. Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. It has been a while since I have published a video. I've been uh, traveling and, and spending holidays with my family, but we are back, back in action. Um, and I wanted to give something uh, a little bit different today, back to our Microvellum Advanced series. I think I'll put this in. Um, and I want to talk about SQL CE Viewer. And some of you maybe have heard of it, some of you maybe have not. Um, we talk about what is SQL CE Viewer, how do you use it, why would you use it, all of the above. So uh, first, this is a an application software that you can download, and Microvellum has a handy link here, which I will put in the, the uh, show notes, um, where you can download this. And so, for those who don't know, the back end of Microvellum is SQL SQL database. And so, whether you're on a server or on local, it, it, it's still SQL. Um, it, either SQL CE, which is the example I'm on now, or if you have a server, it's on SQL server. Um, but database, ultimately the tables and stuff in it are, are the same. And what SQL CE Viewer is, is an interface, an application that allows you to view the database itself, the tables. Um, and so again, as I mentioned, this is, this is an advanced video. So for many of you guys, um, Proceed with caution. Everything I'm talking about here, one, may be inaccessible to you if you do not have permissions to access this. Um, you're working at a server at a company. Um, don't don't try. Um, consult your IT, consult your managers, um, and do not do what I'm going to do here. For those who are uh, either IT managers or you're responsible for your software or you're just working in a local configuration, um, this video will give you um, a couple of things. One, how to use SQL CE Viewer, how you can access the database and the tables to view things. Um, and, and two, um, I want to talk a little bit just about the, the composition of the tables, the database behind Microvellum, and it'll tell everybody a little bit about how things work behind the scenes to understand Microvellum a little bit better, uh, which I think is good for everybody. And the third thing is if you are getting into report writing, report editing, um, report designer, any of those things, it is very important to understand the database tables because what reports are doing is actually pulling data directly from these tables that we're looking at here. So without further ado, um, as mentioned, you can download SQL CE if you are here. It's a free application. Um, just download this to your desktop. Um, and then when you open it up, I will open this again from scratch. Um, you are going to get uh, a splash screen, something like this, and some options here. So um, what here is, is what type of SQL server are you connecting to? So if you are in a company that has SQL server set up, your microvellum configuration is on a server with multiple people accessing it. Um, you would probably click the SQL Server option, which means you're going to need either somehow permissions. And if you don't know any clue what this this is, um, you're going to have to talk to your your IT admin, your database admin, or somebody that does have this information. And you probably should proceed with caution. SQL CE is what I'm going to talk about today, which basically just means, hey, if you're working on a local configuration of microvellum. Um, all you need to know is the path to where your factory database is and you can access it. And so if you don't know where that is, um, the easiest way is in Microvellum in your configuration. If you just go to help and browse to factory data, um, it's going to show you where your data is. And if you're in a SQL CE configuration, it is in this factory database folder. You have three SDF files. And technically each of these are files it's a little SQL databases that you can open. Um, secure is basically just your credentials if you have users set up um, for logins to have a password. Um, graphics is just your graphics where if, if you have like things like CAD blocks and profiles and, and images stored in your database, this is where they're stored. Uh, and factory. Factory is the main one or that you should be concerned about and that we're interested in today. Um, it's 
it's important to note that even if you're on a server configuration, you likely have these files in this location and they're not real or they're real, but they're not your actual database. I, I have encountered this a lot where um, clients or people will say, oh, I wrapped up my entire configuration and, and here's my database. Uh, when Microvalum installs, it, you know, it's going to put these here by default. These are kind of always here, but then if you set up your server database, your actual live database you're acting, acting accessing is somewhere else on the server. So uh, if you open this and you're following along and you're on a server configuration, but you open this and you're confused why the database doesn't look like your project list, that's probably why. So I could double click this and open. Um, I happen to have another uh, SQL viewer application that it will probably open. So, but what I can do now is if I copy this path, I can come back to my splash screen for SQL CE viewer and I'm on SQL CE and I could paste or actually I can click here and then what I'll do is I'll paste it here and it's going to take me to that same location where I can click this and it's now mapped to that database file and when I click OK it's going to open that. Fun. So um, while this is loading, all right, here we go. Um, while I have this open, um, let's look at and talk about the tables here. So over on the left, what I'm going to have is a list of all the different tables in the database. And if you're not familiar with databases, um, there's plenty of videos you can go look at about SQL databases, um, that will do a better job explaining than I will. Uh, but uh, they're in alphabetical order here. And every table has some different information. So let's start at something that is probably the simplest. Um, now if I go to projects, uh, this is, as it sounds like, a list of your projects. And so anytime you create a project in Microvome, you go to your project tree and create a project, it's going to add a row to this table. And it has the name that you gave the project. So this is a list of the projects that I happen to have in, in this database that I'm working with, um, as well as some other information. Um, and so the way SQL is a relational database, which means that across all these tables, it uses relationships to cross-reference data from one table to another. And those relationships are these link IDs. So you notice every table that I open is going to have a column called link ID. And that link ID is a code that is the unique identifier of that row across this entire database, across all tables. Um, and then anywhere that, for example, I need to reference and create a relationship between a project and some other table, like categories, um, there is a column where that relationship is made and referenced that category. So for example, uh, I can see just here from this database, you notice these projects don't have a anything in the link ID category. What that tells me is that they are not in a category. So in, in your project tree, and actually let's go see if that's true. If I go to projects, you're going to see I have one, two, three, four projects that are not in categories, and then I have these categories with nothing in them. Um, and so in here, um, which is interesting because, yeah, okay. Um, so these are, these are, these are projects that are not in a category, uh, which is a little bit confusing, but you don't see them. But I have now these projects that have a category. So if I were just to take copy this, so link ID category, that tells me that this is referenced from my categories table. So if I go over my categories, what this table has is all of my categories across everything in in the in uh, Microvome. So anywhere in Microvome that I have a tree structure like this with folders or categories, including my material file, including my edge main file, my hardware, um, all throughout this software, there's categories. 
they're all in this table. And you'll notice I now have a leak ID column here. So this leak ID category is telling me which row from the categories table um, that those projects are related to. And I want to search here. Okay, so it's telling me this category is in leak ID category, which I think means this category is actually a subcategory under this guy. And this would, you know what I think we just found is an orphan category, possibly. Um, but anyways, and then this is a good example, sometimes why um, you might need to go in the database. It's possible that things become orphaned. And what that means is like, okay, maybe I have a project that is referencing a category that doesn't exist in this table. And so that means that it's telling the software, hey, I should be showing this project under a category with this link ID. And if that gets somehow deleted from this table, then it doesn't have a way to show it. And you can have a project in your database that you can't access through the project tree for some reason. Um, and that can, that can create an issue, obviously. Um, so we look at projects. So this is your projects. There's some other information here as well. Um, it, what's important to know is every project has its own link ID. So even if for some reason somehow I got two projects with the same name in here or similar names, the link ID is really what matters. That's how the database knows everything. You'll see some other things. There's a project number. Uh, I couldn't tell you where this is seen, probably in Micromanager or you know, some other application Microrealm has. You've got a scheduled completion date, scheduled start date. If you use those features, um, project type. So we'll get into that, but you'll notice in a lot of these tables, there's types and that's how things are organized. For example, categories. Um, if I sort by type, you'll start to notice some, some, some things here. Um, for example, 31 accessories. I see all these, these are probably sub assembly categories. Uh, if I go down to 33 specification groups, uh, if I go down to type 44 suspended cabinets, so these are probably product categories. If I go down to 50. Two, my guess is these are our hardware categories. So you can start to like learn and decipher through here how things work um, and how things are tied together. Um, you see category level, this will tell you how many layers deep. So you can have subcategories and sub subcategories. This category level will tell you like if you just keep in your material file adding a category and a sub and a sub, all of them are here in this table. And this category level and the link ID category, I think, is or, or parent is how you determine how it knows if it's a sub or not. Um, so you also have tables for your, let's, for example, locations. So um, underneath projects, if you have rooms in projects, those are your locations. Anytime you create a room in a project, it's going to add that to this table. And the link ID project is what project it is it. So for example, I'm in this project called Microvel Made Easy, which in my projects table, uh, I have here. Okay, and you notice here's my link ID. It starts 238G and ends 3SW8. That's unique. If I go to locations, um, you'll see here I've got all of these with that link ID. So all of these rooms are in that project. It's got this link ID project, which is what ties these rooms to my project. And so if I go here and I go to open room, you'll see the same list here that I that are that are here. I've got cut parts, uh, uh, hardware, machining, materials, products, sub assemblies. Okay, sort this. Got cut parts, hardware, machining, materials, products, and the sub assemblies down here. These, these are rooms in different projects. 
Um, so you can start to see, and here's the drawing name, which you'll notice is a separate column than name. Name is the room name you'll see in the project list tree, but it's possible the drawing name could be different if for some reason I referenced a cat file that had a different name than my room. Um, I've also got link ID category. So if I were to search for this in my categories table, let's see if we can find that category. Okay. So project microbiome made easy. And so microbiome is actually creating a, a parent category for every project you'll see here. You might not think of that as a category, but there's a default category made in every project. So this um, relationship structure is what ensures that these rooms show up in this project as well as in the project tree under this category. And I can infer from this that, okay, type 28 is a project category. So going further, um, you have spec groups. So if I go down, there's a, a table for specification groups. And then here is going to be a list of all of my spec groups in my entire database across all projects. And so you'll see a lot of duplicates in this because every time I create a project, it copies my library level spec groups to that project. Um, you'll notice, for example, here, the types. I have a couple type six. Those are my template spec groups. So I have two template product spec groups and then room components have their own spec groups called room components. That's for your walls. Um, and, and, uh, and similarly in every project, I get a copy of those, all three of those. And then you have, so I've got a link ID again, every table has a link ID column and a unique link ID for every row. And then I have all these link ID, et cetera, columns. So link ID category, cutparts file. So there's a table for every spec group component, um, your hardware file, your global file, and each spec group component has their own link ID and their own. Um, reference, as well as my project. So this link ID project determines what project the, each spec group is tied to, uh, um, and so on and so forth. So you're starting to see that basically once you understand how relationships work from table to table, um, you can start to kind of search and find things in your database. And occasionally when things go awry, maybe like I know I have a project, but it disappeared. There's been plenty of cases where that's happened and I've had things get orphaned. And there's been cases where I've, on understanding this, been able to come in here and find the record and correct the link IDs to, to make it show up. I'm not going to dive too much into that, but I think what's important in this video is that you start to understand um, the, the anatomy of the database and, and how kind of the relationships work behind the scenes. Um, and because this will help you is because when you're building reports, uh, whether you realize this or not, what you're actually doing is creating relationships in your reports to pull data from tables based on those relationships. So just, and you have to use these link IDs ultimately. And so what that does is basically in a report builder, you're actually saying, hey, if I want my report to list all the cut parts in this subassembly, but that are only in this subassembly in this work order tied to the spec group, then to do that, you're going to have to create a filter or a relationship between the cut parts, um, or actually in this part, this case, that would be in your work order database, but between your, your, your cut parts table, um, probably your spec specification groups table and your work order table. Um, so understanding the anatomy helps go a long way. Um, one last thing I will try to point out. So let's go to our products table. Is because you may be asking, well, if it, all this is database, like where's my products, my spreadsheets? Um, and so, yes, all the products, subassemblies, spec groups, things are ultimately spreadsheets as well. And a lot of times I'll see questions about like, hey, well, I know that this value, this prompt, or this something is in the database. How do I reference it in the spreadsheet? And this is where it can get confusing, but there is a difference between the spreadsheet and the database. 
And there are some things that Microvelva is programmed to populate to the spreadsheet. But ultimately, the spreadsheets, you see this workbook column? So I'm in the products table. So in this table is every product in every project and in the library in my entire database. So you'll see here's the name of the products. And if I sort by name, you'll have duplicates. Um, and that's because that name product could be in multiple projects or um, multiple times in the same project, so on and so forth. Um, and for every one of them, there is this workbook column a byte array. In that byte array is actually the workbook embedded as what's kind of called blob data. And so literally it's just in this, it's a file that's saved in this cell, more or less. And what Microvome is able to do is it's able to load that workbook into memory and, and evaluate all formulas and stuff. Um, and then also if need to reference other data here. So uh, once you kind of understand that, you can come here and start to see, okay, what data is here in the database? That's all values that can be referenced in reports easily. Um, and if it's not in the database and you want it in a report, then you're going to have to pull it from the workbook through prompt values into variables. And, and, and that's a whole other video. Um, but uh, I think it's important to understand kind of that little bit here. So if I actually go into one of these, let me see, say a file to disk, I'm going to save this. Um, product, whatever. So let's go see if we can open that. What I did is I just saved the workbook from this product. So let's see what that is. That is a base two door, one drawer, I'm guessing. And so if I go to my downloads and open that guy, you're going to see it looks like, which the formulas don't all evaluate um, because I'm not in microphone, but this is essentially my, I've got my cut parts, my hardware, my sub assembly. This looks familiar to you guys if you're used to looking at workbook designer for a product. This is my product. It's embedded as a file in, in the database. And so what Microbelm is doing is actually storing that workbook. If you're making changes to that workbook, then it's updating those changes and then saving them here to this row and to that cell. And then when you open the product, it's loading that workbook again in, into memory. Um, so, um, I could spend a ton of time going way further into this, but I wanted to give a, a an overview of SQL CE Viewer, a great app application that can be useful for especially, um, database admins or, you know, expert level users, um, to troubleshoot some things and overall become familiar with the database itself. And hopefully this gave you a little bit of a, uh, an a lesson on what's happening behind the scenes, the databases. If you have any questions, um, please leave a comment below. I'd love to do future videos. So ask any questions in the comments uh, that you would like to see me cover about databases um, or SQL CE Viewer or reports or all the above. And I'd love to answer them in, in future videos. Uh, appreciate if you liked and shared this. And subscribe if you haven't for updates on when I release future videos.